two number one overall draft picks in firstly from 2003, the NBA's all-time scoring leader, LeBron Raymond James Sr., and secondly from 2012, in a man resembling the best two-way player in the game right now, Anthony Marshawn Davis Jr., are well aware that winning, winning in the playoffs requires keeping your mind right both on and off the court, which involves having a keen understanding of the media spiral. After today's film room breakdown evaluating critical play sets and moments from Game 3, where the Lakers held Golden State to their lowest scoring playoff game since 2019 and won by 30, stay tuned for the advice LeBron and Davis have for young players navigating their circumstances. Before that, just 12.1% of my audience is subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. To open the game, the Lakers execute a play they call Punch AD, where they first get a clear post entry for Davis and have two wings on the opposite end cut off the ball simultaneously with one dive cutting, in this case LeBron, and the other V cutting, in this case Reeves. James and Austin act as decoys to freeze the strong side defense, but Davis instead finds the spotted up D'Lo and Russell knocks it down. Anthony Davis is currently the most versatile and overwhelming rim-protecting presence in the association, and things could change, but in the here and now, it's not close. Here, he shows off his defensive prowess. Vanderbilt funnels Curry into the backline rotation of AD, whose Kentucky-bred timing and 36-inch vertical takes care of the high-arcing floater. With LeBron now switching on to Steph, James springs off his lead foot after a Curry crossover with AD's intimidating presence as the second line of defense under the basket, also impacting the missed layup. But Davis ends up turning it over, failing to save it from going out of bounds, as the rest of the team, other than he and James, are too quick to get up the floor. Reeves does get back for the closeout on Thompson, but Anthony's attention to detail realizes Thompson's actually passing out of this shot in an attempt to get it to Looney. About any other big would have gone to box out immediately as Clay elevated into this shot, but watch how Davis stays focused on Clay the whole time before using his quick hands to pick off this mid-air entry pass. Very next offensive possession, AD makes it a four-point swing where on the weak side low block, he catches a floater pass from LeBron after the King was initially trapped. With LeBron dishing from the high post, Draymond scopes out this delay Chicago roll playset by cutting off the angle for Davis to come off the pin down. So instead of setting a pin down, this turns into a cross AD action with Reeves setting a back screen and popping out to the left corner, which opens up the lane completely for Davis and LeBron seems a bounce pass through Curry. They run the same action for their next bucket, with this time D'Lo setting the cross screen and pop into the same corner to receive the pass from LeBron. Then Russell attacks the lead foot of Wiggins and finds Davis in the pocket. Back to the defensive end, where the Lakers would stick to their decision to play drop coverage, and here it works to perfection, with Davis veering back to disrupt the pick and roll by then lunging up to force Clay into the midair outlet to Green, following the pass to Green, and springing up yet again to somehow find enough elevation for a double, double jump rainbow. to block the layup. A few possessions later, there's not much to say about this, other than that it's an ill-advised layup attempt from Moody. The Warriors have yet to fully grasp the type of shot-blocking phenom they're tasked with scoring on in this series. Another example of that is Steph attempting a Steve Nash dribble through the paint and around the low man maneuver. He thinks he has Davis beat on the inverted Smitty for a reverse lay-in, but AD's awareness, quickness, and reach is just too much to deal with. Of course, Wiggins would beg to differ after collecting that blocked shot and hammering it on AD, but I digress. Davis has racked up a stunning 49 combined steals and blocks in these playoffs, which is 14 more than the next closest player. AD currently ranks first in the playoffs in blocks, in deflections, in defensive rebounds, in contested twos, and he's number six in steals. Meanwhile, the Lakers improve to 6-0 in these playoffs when D'Lo scores at least 17 points, and one of the best shot creators in the game was cooking early on. This early offense wide pin action, with Reeves setting the down screen, gets D'Angelo off of Thompson just enough 
for the spot up triple. A play called Double Fist Indiana Strong sees LeBron duck into the lane, draw the eyes of all five defenders before finding D'Lo. Lazy Warrior transition defense sees him attack to his offhand and wither through a gaping seam and still have time to get back to his left for the hoop. Or how about D'Lo's sauciest bucket of the night, where he curry slides in the opposite direction of the AD screen, steps back in the lane, pump fakes to get Thompson jumping, before pivoting around for a drifting back spinning mid. Capping off the Game 3 film with the sequence of the night from LeBron. First off, shout out to Rui for the slick behind the back dime at half, and this impulsive decision from LeBron to sell left-handed take, baiting DiVincenzo before leveraging off his right pivot and spinning through pool, displays mind-blowing body control for his size. Then, James sprints back in transition with a full head of steam to the corner and rotates to the opposite end for one of the cleanest blocks you'll ever see. And the clip cuts off, but he was about to draw free throws on the other end to show you the full velocity of La Stamina. Just want to reiterate how much of an honor it is for me to cover the near 40-year-old. The Lakers have a 51-6 record all-time in playoff series after taking a 2-1 series lead. In Game 3 specifically, not only was it a 30-8 run to end the half, as mentioned in yesterday's game recap video, click the top right of your screen to go watch that after this, but at one point, the Lakers had a merciless 21-2 run going as the score went from 40-29 Warriors to 51-42 Lakers. In terms of LA's opponent, and also in terms of the off-the-court side of the spectrum, while the four-time and defending champion dubs have been known for their approach to see everything there is on social media being the self-proclaimed quote-unquote petty kings, the Lakers have a different approach. We'll start with my boy AD, who said about social media in his post-game interview after Game 2 that he quote, doesn't give attention to any of that shit. Meanwhile, here was LeBron's advice to his young teammates regarding social media. Well, I think just for the young guys that hasn't been a part of the postseason or haven't, you know, not much experience in the postseason, just stay off the TV and stay off social media. You win a game, everybody's the greatest player in the world. You lose a game, they, they throwing dirt on you. It's literally that simple. You know, it's all about training your mind for the next challenge. You know, what's the next challenge? This game is over with. We play well. Okay, cool. But we got another one on Monday, you know. So, you know, um, if you got a show to watch or if it's one of your favorite movies or if you like listening to music or if you're reading books or whatever the case may be or playing cars with the family, whatever, you know, but you, know, you stay off social media. And, uh, and when you watch the other playoff games, watch it on mute and play some music in the background. That's what I do. Whichever take you can vibe with, whether it's the Dubs' admittance that they see everything, or the Lakers proclaiming they see and pay attention to none of what goes on online, there's no denying the increasing prevalence that apps like Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube have become in our daily lives throughout the years. Whichever stance a player takes, whether it's saying they block out the noise or see everything, having an understanding of the ins and outs of the media, knowing what their goals are in terms of earning a living and controlling the narrative, has become an essential quality for an NBA player to scope out. If the modern day NBA player can't understand the media, that's a problem and something GMs should take into account when making their draft picks. Luckily, at least by the eye test, it seems in this Lakers and Warriors battle, albeit the fact that the two sides have completely different approaches, that we're witnessing two groups that have the proper grasp on the media's perspective.